It's the last edition of Molly's Middletown Meetup! <laughs> We're gonna meet Maggie. Maggie is um, my sort of basic, most uh, mainstay character. Maggie's got the red hat. Um, we wanted the boldest color for Maggie because she comes back the most. I have the most scenes as Maggie. And Maggie is the only one of all the characters that, that gets, um, what do you call this, an article of clothing. So she gets this great sweater. And um, in the show, there's also jeans and there's Uggs and it's winter and it's snow time. And so, um, you know, uh, yeah, she's really cozy. She's cozy and comfy at home. And um, uh, she's, we find out in the show she's dating Bart. Um, she's a local and I just use my own voice and I picked a couple mannerisms for her that when she, you know, when I'm, uh, when I'm, when I'm waiting for Bart to pick up the phone, uh, you know, I've, I've got a couple things that I do as I'm in nervous tics kind of stuff. But, um, but basically Maggie's just me in terms of my choices. There's nothing particularly interesting um, or specific uh, apart from, apart from how I sound, um, that I chose for Maggie. But um, what I wanted to do for this meetup, because it's the last one, is show you some of the cool Easter eggs around the set, as well as other things I might have forgotten in the past meetups. So the show now, um, the show now is available online this week, um, but, uh, when I when I um, told you about Misty, for example, I, I showed you guys the Omnicord, which I test every day, and make sure that the batteries are good. <laughs> um, and I, I think I said in that meetup that our friend Jörg Ogunfus gave us this Omnicord, and I wanted to mention, I meant to say that he's a healthcare worker and has been um, soldiering on through this pandemic like nobody's business, and I appreciate him and his work so much um, for these past two years. So thank you, Jörg, for all your, for all your work. Um, we also have um, a photo up here of Fred Alley that made its way onto the set. Um, and this is the old original Vitrola from Lumberjacks and Love. And keeping on that theme, if we go all the way down to the bottom, you will see the original bosom. Uh, costume piece that Karen Mall wore as the original kid in the first Lumberjacks in Love. Um, so one of the fun things that we did with this, with with the set, um, Lisa Schlenker and Neen Rock um, collaborated on the set dressing that is here. Neen helped helped me pick out all the phones and all of that sort of stuff. And um, Lisa asked her to please fill in, fill in some of this negative space um, with, with cool trinkets and doodads that are, um, that are nostalgic to Northern Sky. So that's what some of these cool old Lumberjacks items are. Um, we also have down here, I didn't get to show you the intelligence of dogs. <laughs> and um, she also snuck in a couple different romance novels. Uh, because of the romance, you know, segment of the show. Um, we also have a, a section of records because uh, we are, of course, low on records over at the, um, at the station. <laughs> um, this is Barb's pipe wrench. I didn't get to show you Barb Gibson's. You remember Barb Gibson? This is Barb. Barb Gibson, um, this is her pipe wrench. And then over here, um, for Jenny from Jake Jensen's House of Smoke and Meat, I forgot to show you her tissues because Jenny is, Jen, Jenny's the one that has a, uh, a stuffy nose. Um, and we also, way down in the corner here, nobody probably sees this except the very front few seats in the corner can see this, um, this can of tobacco, which is also um, for Barb Gibson because Barb chews. And there's one other thing I wanted to say about the character Mora when I introduced her last week. Um, she's a lady from the South who has just moved here and needs help with her furnace. And I forgot to say that I, uh, I went to school in Dallas, Texas. And when I was thinking about this character of Mora, um, I was remembering my costume practicum teacher, Guyva Taylor. And while I was down in Texas, this guy I've always said, well, bless your heart, bless your heart. And so uh, Mora, this is Mora's, um, what do you call that, gesture. Her gesture while she's on the phone asking for help is to, is to pat her heart over and over again. There's so many, so many things to tell you guys. And, um, you know, there was certain stuff that I forgot about. Uh, 
I also, I also meant to say that Misty's phone um, got to be borrowed by Alex Campia and used in not even remotely this summer. Ooh. <laughs> Um, and I don't know if I ever even introduced you to the TARDIS or the, um, or the Dalek can opener. <laughs> it makes noises. And it's a cookie jar. <laughs> so when the show closes, I'm going to put all my cookies in there. And, um, and this guy will open up your beer bottle. So I think those are all the things that I forgot to share. I do want to shout out um, these designers one last time, Lisa Schlenker, the set designer, Karen Brown Laramore, who gave me all these extraordinary pieces, um, and our beloved Neen Rock, who we miss so much, but I adore how present she is in this, in this design, and that I get to use things every day that, um, that we worked on together. So it's been real fun. I hope that you've enjoyed Molly's Middletown Meetup. And if you didn't get to see Naked Radio in person, please go and figure out how to watch it online. There's a link for tickets at the website. Oh. <laughs>